We're taking your plant and garden questions today for Lisa Briggs at the Bruce Company. The number to call is 270-608. That's right, 608-270-9933. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hey there, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm just... Fine. Enjoying the 40s? <laughs> the temperatures? I am, just for one day. One when it's day. It's supposed to be super yeah, little, chilly tonight, right? A little breather. All Great right. to see you in the wall of seed packets. <laughs> Let's go to Sam in Lodi. Hi, Sam. What's your question? Um, I didn't get my perennial garden um, covered, and the snow melted off right away because it's southern exposure and right by the house. And so I was going to put straw or hay on it because you can't find leaves now. But if I do that, then straw and hay is going to seed and come up in my garden, right? The straw will be less seedy than hay, so okay. if you're going to do one or the other, I would use the straw. You can actually get chopped straw that is much cleaner than just a bale. We do sell that here at the garden center, and the purpose of it is to keep your ground frozen, not to warm it up. Okay. So that should, it should help. Okay. All right, very good. Let's go to Dwayne in Partyville. Hi, Dwayne. What's your question? Dwayne, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Yeah, this is uh, Dwayne. I have a question to ask you guys about the uh, beetles for roses. Okay. Yeah, my. So uh, if you're... Yeah, the bugs are killing my um, roses. Okay, so I assume you're talking about Japanese beetles in the summer. They're about as big as your thumbnail, kind of a coppery brown with white spots on the sides. And there are a number of things that you can use. Um, for roses, you can certainly use a systemic product. Um, you can use, this is just an insect killer for roses and flowers. Or eight works really well, too. These are contact killers for Japanese beetles. One thing that might help is if you have really nice turf is to treat your lawn. They spend 85% of their life underground. Do not use traps, though. Traps will just attract more beetles to your house from your neighbor's yard. So just a good um, sort of broad spectrum insecticide. You can also use like fro floating row covers to put over top and keep them from getting to the roses. Okay. All okay. those things will work. That's a few months off though. Yeah. That's going to think about. Off. We usually don't see them until like around the 4th of July. All right, let's go to Angie in Rio. Hi, Angie, what's your question? Hi, I'm trying to figure out what window would be best to put my... Um... Your orchids. Oh, yeah, my sure. orchids in. Thank you. <laughs> so you probably have like a phalaenopsis like this. They call them moth orchid. And moth orchids like an eastern side, so bright but indirect light. If you have them where the sun is actually on the foliage, sometimes it will burn the leaves a little bit. They'll get a little bit sunburned. So if the light is coming in really strong, then you want to pull it back out of the direct sunlight. But eastern windows are good. If you're going with the south, you really need to pull it back so you don't get that hot sun directly on the leaves. All right, very good. Let's go to Paul in Mount Horeb. Hi, Paul, what's your question? Yes, my question is we have a gardenia in our sunroom. It's, it's bushy and beautiful, but the buds form, but then they dry up and fall off. They don't open up. So gardenias are so super tricky to winter in. You have a sunroom. I would say that I would watch the watering. So sometimes that will trigger the buds to drop um, too dry or too wet. So make sure that you let the pot dry out in between waterings. Also, sometimes a little bit of a chilly weather will um, get rid of, will help to, you know, those the flower buds will sort of fall off. The other thing you might want to try too is a bloom boosting fertilizer, but something that has a little bit of acidity in it because gardenias really appreciate some acid soil. And in a pot, in potting mix that is sterile and you're watering, you know, every week or so, it's probably washing a lot of the nutrients out. So you might want to try that as well. Okay, thanks for the call, good luck. Let's go to Darren in Lone Rock. Hi Darren, much question. Hello. Hi. Um, I am interested in growing some vegetables, and where I live is right along the Wisconsin River, and most of the soil is very sandy. And we also have mm -hmm. a problem with rabbits. So okay. what is the best way to go about growing, say, vegetables, and what vegetables would be best in a sand-based soil environment? Nobody's going to do be super happy in a, a really sandy environment. It is just, there's just not a lot of fertility to it. 
But what you might want to try are raised beds. Um, that would help with the rabbit issue, but then you could really control the soil that's in there. You can just build those raised beds right on to um, right on the soil. You don't have to clear anything below them. If they're about 18 inches tall, that's most of what most of the veg you're going to grow is. And then that way you can do a good sort of compost mix and have really good soil for the veg. And then as far as rabbits are concerned, this is my favorite thing to take rabbits away. This is by Shake Away. This is a freeze-dried granulated predator urine. <laughs> Oh, well, so great. I use this, I know it's a mouthful. I use this all summer to keep the rabbits away from my hostas until okay. after the garden tour. All right, so this will be, this will help with that. All right, we're out of time, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you all for calling. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Lisa. We'll see yep. you soon.